Intended audience is 13 and up. The original Beyblade series launched in North America in 2002, and it immediately hooked me as one of my favorite franchises ever as a child. And that's coming from somebody who grew up with Pokemon, Digimon, Monster Rancher, and several other kid-directed shonen anime, and Beyblade just took the cake. It was the closest thing to a product in an anime that functioned the same way in real life. In 2004, the National World Championship took place, and it was something that I couldn't attend. I wasn't uh, in a state that was anywhere close to where the events were happening, and I was fiending over it. I was watching the updates on the Beyblade website and wishing that I could go. And today, we're gonna do something very special. We're gonna take the winning combo from 2004, and we are going to beat it. Nolan, the world champion, uploaded a video about a year ago talking about his experience, and he also details the combos that he used at the North American Championship as well as the World Championship. World Champion Blade, and this is the launcher that I use in both championships. These blades here are both now retired. I don't play with these anymore, uh, but they're unbeatable. <laughs> but they're unbeatable. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that, Nolan. But first thing I had to do was actually order a pistol because I didn't have one. So I've made a couple rules for myself. I can't do any testing against the winning combo until the battle. I'm also only allowing myself to build one combo. Now I have no way of recreating the stadium that was used for the tournament, but there's no exit. So what we're gonna do is use the burst stadium. The exit's closed. Now, with the lack of exits, attack types are going to be at a severe disadvantage because KOs won't be a thing. So in the tournament, it was the best two out of three, but for the sake of the video, we're going to go first to five points. But the first thing that we need to do is piece together the winning combo. So I specifically went out of my way to get the Hasbro version of Bistool because that's the one that was used in the tournament. It also has a reinforced mold that makes it a little stronger. The Bistool Beyblade itself is actually a recolor of Frostic Jonzer and it predates Bakuten Shoot Beyblade or the manga and anime. It actually originates from the Game Boy Color game with the bit being obtainable in the game. And this one was released in 2002 by Hasbro, making it one of the earliest Beyblades released in North America. So the pre-spin gear system had a fixed spin gear that was screwed into the base. And here you can see the bit from the Game Boy Color game, which I plan on covering on the channel at some point. So the winning combo is actually pretty simple, considering all the parts that were out at the time. It consists of Wing Cross, the Bistol Attack Ring, 10 Heavy, and the SG Metal Flat Base. I'll have a link in the description for the Plastics database, which logs all of the different parts, as well as the naming. And it's also a good resource for building combos, because it tiers everything. The combo that I've decided to build is similar to one that I used to build as a kid, but updated with my knowledge of Plastic Gen over the years. So we're going to be building a left spin stealer, or zombie type as it used to be called, and we're going to be using parts from a total of five different Beyblades. So from Dragoon V2, we're going to be using the customized grip base. This is going to give us some good options for customization for the bottom half of our Beyblade. And from Dragoon S, we're going to be using the left spin gear shell, which is going to allow us to rotate in left spin. And from Galleon, we're going to be using the War Lion attack ring and sub attack ring. And from Wolborg, we're going to be using the bearing spin gear casing, as well as the shaft tip and potentially the bearing, although I'm going to go through all of the bearings from all of my Wolborgs and see which one works the best. We're going to be using Wide Defense for the Weight Disc and Last Cross Survivor from Jonzer V2. Alright, so after going through all of my bearings and finding which one I felt like was the best and yielded the best results stamina-wise, it's time to go ahead and assemble the Beyblade, starting by taking off the existing parts on the customized grip base. And then we're going to assemble the bearing, shaft, and tip. And then the metal weight goes on the shaft and then the spin gear casing goes around that. And then we pop it into the base.
Next, we're going to add our support part from Dronzer V2. This is going to give us an extension on the base width-wise and is going to help with our LAD, or life after death. Next is going to be our weight disc, and this matches up nicely with our base and our support part. It's almost flush, which is what we want. And then we're going to add the galleon attack ring and sub-attack ring, or the warline attack ring, depending on how you want to refer to it. Again, I'll have a link down to the plastics database below. And our Beyblade is complete. So here it is all assembled. And I just want to remind you guys that this is just for fun. Uh, I have the utmost respect for Nolan. Uh, I was a big fan as a kid, and I'm still a fan. I'm glad that he's, uh, you know, still involved in some way in the community. So even if it's not, you know, regularly, it's nice to see him pop up every once in a while. So again, this is going to be first to five points. So let's, uh, let's see who wins. I will be alternating launches to make it as fair as possible. I'm not gonna lie guys, I was kind of nervous making this video because I, I legitimately stuck to the rules. I'd never owned a Bistool as a kid and I had no idea how this combo was gonna perform. I had no idea if the combo that I was building was gonna beat this. I know Bistool gets used for compact combos, so I wasn't sure if maybe it would be able to just like batter me around the stadium. But uh, yeah, I was, um, I, I was a little nervous about it, I'm not gonna lie. And the Galleon combo takes the first point. While it looks close, Galleon scrapes by with another point. So all of the parts that I used for my combo were available at the time of the World Championship. So if anybody thinks that maybe this was unfair, uh, all this stuff was, was available. So the fact that Nolan was able to win with Bistool is pretty awesome. Like, it's one of the earliest Beyblades ever released. Actually, Frostic Dronzer, the attack, the same attack ring that's on Bistool, is one of the first three Beyblades ever released in 1999 in Japan. So there is an electronic stadium in Japan that came out that has a spinning center ring. So if you guys would be interested in me redoing this and getting that stadium for this challenge and just uh, trying it again, I'd potentially be interested in, uh, in doing that for you guys. So it wasn't made available in America, so I would have to import it. But uh, I did notice that the stadium that they use in the championship does seem to have a spinning center ring in it. So... So Galleon was able to take another point there. And just so you guys know, there was no database back when the World Championship was out. There was like the Beyblade forums on the official website, but there was no collective like database for tiered parts and stuff like that. It wasn't organized the way it is today on the WBO. So, uh, you know, kids were just putting stuff together. And while it looks close, Galleon is able to scrape by for the last point. Real quick, guys, I just wanted to say thank you for a thousand subs. You guys have been super supportive over the last month since I started this channel, and it's really blown me away. I wasn't expecting to grow as fast as I did, so thank you. Uh, if you guys want me to do more challenges like this, let me know. And if you come up with a combo that can beat mine, also let me know. I'd be interested in that as well. So drop a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next one.